I'm not quite sure how well this is going to go. Right, it's time to make some progress on these walls today. We need to get them more filled, prepped and ready for painting. Right, that's cleared it out a little bit. Uh, again, we're with it without the microphone on the camera, so it'll be a bit dodgy. Plus, we've also got that green plastic up, hence why I'm a bit of a green uh, colour. What we need to do is go ahead and fill all these holes. So I'm going to use two-part um, like epoxy type wood filler. And of course, if you were staining or varnishing or whatever, you wouldn't have to do this stage. Um, but we, as we're painting, we've got to fill every single one of those screw holes and then we'll sand them back. Burns your arms. I think I'm gonna have to have alternate between the ceiling and the and the uh, walls. This only really needs about 20 minutes, half an hour to dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna clear out everything. And then also we need to get on with the ceiling. All the knots and this uh, basic sort of whitewood pine ceiling need to be knotted with knotting solution so they don't show through the paint afterwards. Good. It's actually looking pretty big when it's empty. Unfortunately, it's gonna feel a lot smaller once everything's fitted out here. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and knot all the, uh, the ceiling. I think it's only the ceiling that needs to be done. If you're using the spruce plywood, sometimes that has knots in it as well. Uh, so it's worth going over, it can show through otherwise, but I th I'm not even sure what knotting is. I think it's shellac. Um, but anyway, what it does is just stops the seals the kind of resin in and stops it coming through the paintwork. I've always done two dabs of this kind of 15 minutes apart and it's oh, I've done the whole house like that and it's nothing's come through. I've brought the sander in unfortunately the shop vac that I've got well I've got two uh, one the filter isn't fine enough for this sort of stuff the one that has got a fine filter the hose is tiny because it's meant for stove so it wouldn't be any good. So I'm going to open up both doors, put the filter on here and then hopefully that will be good enough with a dust mask. So that's it with the prep work, I think. We can check after the first undercoat. Well, I'm still looking pretty green and dusty. Actually, really dusty. So with the filler, I went over first with 120 grit and then over everything, or pretty much everything, with 240. The other thing I did with this grooved plywood, if you're making it yourself, that is, if you just get a block 
of timber with a decent right angle on it, or even plywood like this, fold over your um, sandpaper straps, you can then get in there, and it only takes kind of a quick swipe down each, like you're doing a credit card, and that just gets all that kind of burr, the furry stuff out. So decision time now on how I paint it. Um, I've, I was going to use the HVLP sprayer, but I think it's probably going to be more hassle than it's worth. Uh, bearing in mind that I'd have to mask off everything, all the doors, all the rubbers, because it, there's quite a bit of overspray with that, um, and especially on the glass and stuff. The other thing is, you know, if, if I haven't swept the floor and got that absolutely spotless, it can kick up dust off the floor. I don't know, I think it's probably a bit more hassle than it's worth. So what I'm going to do is roll it as normal. Um, that way we can get on a couple of coats of undercoat today and then hopefully tomorrow we can come in here and do a bit of a family painting session. It would be good to spray it but even the roof lights would have to mask off. And the other thing when you when you spray woodwork although you get a great finish a really good finish to start with if you snag it scuff it and you just want to touch up it's quite hard to do because you have to either try and brush it on and then dry roll it off to try and match the same texture whereas if we roll it now it's easier to touch up because there's bound to be marks on here this is going to be a no wax crayon zoom he says all right all i've got is half Tin. What's that? A litre? Yeah, it's about a litre, so I doubt we'll even get the walls out of it. I haven't got time to go out now, but at least we can get a head start before tomorrow. The other thing, if you didn't turn and groove like this and you know what colour your ceiling is going to be, then you can pre-finish the boards and we've done that in the house. So maybe in the summer, when the boards shrink a little bit, you'll end up with a little hairline gap down there and you can get away with that if you already paint the tongues white before you fit it. what I'm painting anymore. I've done this wall, done the ceiling, we'll pick up this up tomorrow, we're gonna have a bit of a family painting day. See you tomorrow. And the replacement mic just arrived. So we can get on track with the audio again. Hopefully that'll get us back where we were before. Okay, we're back on. And we're there. Hopefully that sounds a little better. Okay. Get ready to make a mess and try and control a two year old and a five year old with some paint. <laughs> Anyone want to shake? Yeah, me! 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 Come on! 
You're just shaking your head. Go ahead. I'm not going to get paid for me. I'm very careful. I'm not quite sure how well this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, once we've got the pay, we're going to pay for long here. Yeah. Long, try and do long strokes, so you're going up and down. One, same, two. same as you, Faith. One, two. Faith? One. So you want to go like this, watch. Point it like that. Okay. Okay. Up, Seconds. down. Go up. 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 Well, we are done on the undercoat. We've still got lots more coat. This is hard. I know. Have the good light like we do now in here yeah. it gets much easier because you can look down the wall and you can tell which bits careful keep pressure you can look and see which bits are still wet yeah. and because they look a bit more shiny you'll see what I mean in a minute that's right so what's up and down up. Knock knock. Hello. Hello. I need to get a doorbell. Faith, you appear to have lost an arm. What's your other arm? I don't know. <laughs> have you tucked it in? Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. Up. Down. Lovely. Brush in. Down. No, that's up. Like a diamond in the sky. The wing hole. Little star. How I wanna watch you. Right, as you saw, we had a good crack at getting the van painted yesterday, and it's obviously all dry now. We're using an acrylic paint, so it's very quick to dry. Um, what I want to do now, we've done two coats of undercoat all around, and I just want to make sure that although it doesn't need much of a sand, 
any of the little uh, nibs or anything on the side and, and the corners get all those knocked back and just around some of the knots and there's a couple of rough bits on the ceiling to get. update on the performance of the van even in this state is outside it's I think it's about one degree Celsius at the moment and I've had the fan on well not even a fan just a little convection heater in here and within it took about two to three minutes to warm it up to well above what you would normally have a room in, in a house so the the heating demand looks like it's going to be super low which is promising. So I've been over and rubbed down the ceiling, any kind of rough spots. And I'm going ahead with the paint now. I'm using an eggshell, which we use everywhere in the house. So um, yeah, just an acrylic eggshell. Goes on really well, it does dry very, very quickly. So I water it down a tiny bit, but also I've turned that heater off because that's bound to uh, speed things up faster than we want. Uh, because of course we would just want nice smooth brush strokes. And I always prefer this to go on with brush. You could use the roller, but you've got to get a brush to get in all the grooves anyway. So brush is fine. Right, so I've done the ceiling now. I've been kind of alternating between two or three strips of cladding and then a few bits on the wall just to give your arm a rest because you're really constantly going back and forth. And, and at this point, because it's the final coat, I really want to get the brush strokes really nice, long and smooth because as soon as you get that light coming in from the cab or the back windows, it picks up on everything. So I'll give you a couple of close-ups to show you what I mean. I don't know if you can pick up on it, but I've got this nice sort of subtle hint of the wood grain showing through and uh, and that's kind of what I wanted whereas obviously if we did it all in ply like we've done the walls although you get a really nice flat finish with the same sort of sheen you won't get any of that wood grain so I think for this video we're probably there purely because the next stage we're just about to cross over into is a whole different ball game from the a ball game from this uh, simply because what we've done to date, every van needs to go through to some extent. The the kind of preparation, the stru any structural stuff, the wiring, the insulation, the floor, the ceiling, the walls. And then you get to a point where you've just got this. You know, you've got a pretty boring blank canvas and only you and I know that behind all this, we've done all the, the good work. Whereas anyone else might just look at this and it looks like an empty van. But what, what we build into this now is going to be different, every van's going to be different, every person's got different tastes, so uh, it's not going to be a how-to type videos from now on as such, I don't think it'll be more just showing what we're doing, people can take, pick and choose what they want from that. Still got no idea how I'm going to do the doors, everything has to be kept inside of those rubber seals, and because there's so much of a curve on this bodywork back into the glazing, I can't do that whole square boxed in section because it will cut across the glazing. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. Uh, I probably will end up just attaching a thin clad of ply, a thin plywood on there with the grooves in and just leave exposed metal work. That's not ideal, but we've got insulated on the inside of that so it should be all right. I also need to build the above cab storage because I've completely forgotten about that, so I think I should probably do that now. I won't bore you with that, it's fairly straightforward. I'll show you what I've done in the next video. I won't let you watch paint dry because, yeah, it's the end. We've done it. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Stick around for the next ones by subscribing. Click the bell symbol if you want notifications, but that's it. So, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you in the next video.